Members, the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 22nd of October 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed, or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who may be with us today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air? members. Please be seated. Yeah, my Now we're having a few microphone problems this evening, so I can't turn my microphone off. <laughs> so, um, which basically means that I can only have two other microphones on at any other time. So just. Um, in case you are wondering. Um, members, uh, we have two apologies tonight, being uh, Councillor Hyde and Deputy Lord Mayor Abiyard. Um, that takes us to item six, which is the confirmation of the minutes from the 8th of October 2019. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Canal. Uh, members, any changes, discussion? If not, to the mover. Councillor Moran. Oh. <laughs> to the vote, those in favour? Those against, thank you, that is carried. Uh, there are no deputations tonight, which takes us to item eight. Um, 8.1, we have a petition from uh, to declare Veal Gardens a dry zone. Um, so I look for a mover to um, accept tonight's petition. Thank you, Councillor Moran, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Um, members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. We have a second petition tonight, and that is a petition on the, uh, with regards to parking in Kingston Terrace, and I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Ho, and a seconder, Councillor Moran. Uh, members, those in favour? Those against? Thank you, that is carried, that is accepted. Um, item nine takes us to recommendations of the committee from the uh, from the seventeenth of really? that day is wrong. I was going to say it can't possibly be from last week. Um, the first recommendation is the sports lighting in Gladys Elphick Park. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Canal, and a seconder, Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Canal, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Abraham today. Members, no discussion, questions? Back to the mover, Council Knoll. Members, those in favour? Those against, that is carried, thank you. 
Uh, recommendation two is the assignment of lease for the tree climber look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran, and a seconder, uh, Councillor Kerra. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? I do not. Councillor Kerra? Uh, members? If not, back to the mover. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, recommendation three is the West Franklin Stage 3, 52 to 58 Elizabeth Street, Adelaide. Um, I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Sims and a seconder. Councillor Moran. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Moran. Members? If not, back to the mover. Thank you. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members, recommendation four is social and affordable housing in the city. Uh, look for a mover, Councillor Sims, and a seconder, Councillor uh, Donovan. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, just briefly, by way of background, um, members will be aware that back in February, I moved for Council to uh, investigate options to encourage social and affordable housing in the city of Adelaide and um, administration came back to our committee with a report last week which um, I thought was very comprehensive in terms of the information that was gathered and um, I thank them for that. Um, as part of their recommendations it was suggested that we develop a policy but that we also undertake some scoping work um, to uh, get a sense of the different needs that exist within the city around housing um, and then from that we will uh, develop a strategy as well. I think it is a really important piece of work for the city. We know that homelessness is becoming a huge issue in Adelaide. Anyone who lives in the city or spends a significant amount of time here would know that we are seeing more and more people sleeping on our city streets. I think that is a travesty and uh, we need to do what we can to help them. And uh, one way we can do that, of course, is increasing the stock of social housing and affordable housing. We know that the current targets for affordable housing are failing to deliver appropriate outcomes. And so I think it's incumbent on us as a level of government to do what we can to try and uh, facilitate that sort of development in the city. And um, so that's why I'm very supportive of this recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak? Thank you. Councillor Kouros. Sorry, Lord put forward an amendment. Members, there's an amendment on the screen and I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak to the amendment? Uh, yes. Uh, do I need to read that out or is everyone's quite happy to read it? Thank you, everybody. Does everybody see that? Can everybody? No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, the purpose of the amendment is basically the local government's role to facilitate and develop um, affordable housing uh, needs to um, align and be in partnership with the state government. Um, however, this is not something that we can enforce in a policy position. However, we can develop that policy in conjunction with the state government until they have released theirs. Um, so the purpose of it is to um, to do this first um, without the with the position of what the state government's policy is, and then we can move forward and develop ours. Um, and that's the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Abraham. Today, did you wish to speak? Right, Thank you. I have Councillor Sims and Councillor Moran. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I rise to speak against the um, amendment. It would have been helpful to have seen it before um, the uh, the meeting, but I am uh, concerned about this because it removes reference to us developing a strategy which, uh, as I understand it, is the how. You develop the policy and then the strategy is the how. How do we make it happen? Um, and so I think uh, this really does water down um, the original proposal. But also what worries me about this is it ties the piece of work being undertaken by this council to what is happening uh, with an external body. Um, we can't control when the state government are going to deliver their strategy. They say they want to do it by the end of 2019, but the last thing I would want to see is us kick this work off down the road into the, the never never. I think we have a responsibility to take action on this now. I think what administration have proposed in the original motion, getting the scoping work done, um, which means we can get some research, 
getting a policy position together um, and getting a uh, comprehensive strategy together is the right way to uh, deal with this issue. It's not a huge amount of money, it's not a huge amount of staff time when one considers Council's uh, contributions made to other areas, but I think it is an investment well worth making because as this city has noted, we're experiencing a crisis of homelessness. We have a responsibility to act. I think we also need to uh, increase housing stock in the city, Lord Mayor, as a way of giving a boost to local businesses. Um, many members will be aware of the issues in the east end of the city. Um, that's been driven, of course, by the closure of the RAH, but also um, because council is falling well short of our own strategy to increase our population to 28,000 by 2020. We're falling well below that, Lord Mayor, and a way to lift that is uh, by us having more social housing and uh, more affordable housing in the city. So I urge members to reject this. Um, I think it will water down the proposal and to support the original push. Um, this is a really, really important priority for the city and I don't want to see us waste this opportunity and I don't want to see us kick this down the road and tie progress uh, to the um, actions of the state government. We can't control that, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran? Yes, we're not the state government. We are a st separate instrumentality and also we are the capital city, so social and affordable housing is very, it's very is, is as important to us as uh, as uh, the um, metropolitan area, possibly more. We discussed this at length in the committee and followed the Lord Mayor's recommendation that um, we retain the strategy and uh, uh, retain the scoping. Scoping is where you gather the information to write the policy and strategy is how you decide to implement the policy. So if you just have the policy, it's a complete waste of time. Um, I think the committee got it right and the administration totally explained to us then and we all, except a couple of, uh, of um, people voted to keep the, uh, keep the strategy and the scoping out. But it makes no sense. It's $40,000. Later in the agenda, we are handing out $40,000 quite happily for a party in Chinatown. Now, homelessness and vulnerable people are much more important than a party in Chinatown, important though that is. Uh, so the amount of money we're saving is minuscule. I think that we should stick with what the Lord Mayor said in the committee and retain the scoping, which gives us the information to write the policy, and then a policy, a scoping in a policy without any strategy means that you're not going to do anything. You can't do anything without a strategy. So basically, you might as, you might as well just vote against this completely, not waste time making a policy because you've neutered it. You can't action it and you have no information to base the policy on. Uh, to wait for the state government, you're not the handmaid to the state government, you're a separate level of government. And while this council continues to think that's incorrect, we will always be disabled. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members, Councillor Abraham's again. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I commend Councillor Sims will to go out there and uh, build more affordable housing and more social housing. Um, I, I, sh I share that, um, that passion uh, with him, but we're not the ones that are doing that building. We're not the ones that are uh, going out there finding land here in the city, finding a builder and going out there and building these properties. We're there to facilitate it. We're there to make things easy. We're there to encourage and use the levers wherever we can, but that's as far as we can go. Now, since the state election last year, Lord Mayor, we had the, the state government that came out and, and said they are going to deliver uh, this strategy. Uh, there are a number of reasons behind the delivery of this strategy, whether if you want to talk about the number of public uh, uh, housing, um, the, the way it's been declining, whether if you want to talk about the, uh, the many uh, different uh, mental health uh, uh, and other social issues uh, that affect the tenants uh, that eventually end up in social and public housing. There is there's not a whole lot that, that we can do at the moment because we don't know what the state government is going to come out and propose. 
Um, we don't. We've been told that they are going to deliver this strategy. Chances are they will deliver this strategy by the end of this year. But when they deliver this, this strategy, they will define in there what their role is, what the role of the community housing providers are, what the role of the private sector is, what the role of the federal government is, and what the role of local government, not just us here in the city of Adelaide, but local government as a whole is. Once we have that report, we'll see what levers are at, are, are at our disposal. Then we can set a policy position, we can go out and form a strategy, because then we'll know what levers we've got at our disposal. We know where the gaps are, and wherever we can, we'll go and fill them. So I'll share that with you, Councillor Sims, and I commend Councillor Koros for bringing this uh, this to the Chamber. Thank you, Councillor Abraham. Uh, Councillor Marshall and then Councillor Donovan. Uh, look, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor, and I thank also uh, Councillor Abraham today for the, the comments, and I understand that as a employee of the State Housing Authority, he has particular specialist knowledge in this area. But this council has always acted independently, and it may not be known to the councillor, but this council has been involved in the development of social and affordable housing projects and retains properties to this day. This council has been involved in the provision of rate rebates as a policy to encourage um, uh, the use of social and affordable housing. This council has always aspired to do the right thing in the community. I, I somehow feel that these days we're doing a lot of genuflecting to the state government. Uh, the government rings up and says, chop down a, a couple of hundred year old trees on Can North we stick Terrace to the motion, say, please, Councillor Martin? Oh, I beg your pardon, Lord Mayor. I, I, there's a common thread running through it. What I'm trying to emphasize is that every time there seems to be a policy uh, vacuum, we defer to the state government. Why can't we have our own particular view? Now, Lord Mayor, and you may be able to answer this for me as a member of the uh, Capital City Council of Lord Mayors, how many other capital cities have policies on social and affordable housing? I can't actually answer that directly. Sorry, Councillor. I'll well, take that on advice. Sydney? Melbourne? Oh, Sydney. Mm, Brisbane? They all do. Yeah, most of them do. And it's an extraordinary thing that we should be declaring this policy vacuum pending a decision by the state government. Now, look, I, I attended today, and I didn't see uh, any of my uh, colleagues there. I attended today the annual general meeting of Shelter SA, which is the combined organisation for all housing groups, community housing groups within uh, uh, South Australia. And I've got to tell you, Lord Mayor, uh, as I was speaking with delegates there, they were just flabbergasted that this council, these councillors are proposing to abrogate our responsibility within the area of social and affordable housing, deferring to the state government, not having a policy until after the government determines uh, what it is it wants to do. Uh, they were flabbergasted because they recognise, unlike some of my colleagues, that there is a, a housing crisis in this city. Uh, and we're not talking about, as uh, my colleague here said, mentally ill people looking for houses. This is about people who find themselves homeless in desperate circumstances. Women, women, Council. women fleeing. Is that a warning, Lord Mayor? Uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, women fleeing domestic violence, uh, looking for somewhere to put their heads down and somewhere where their children can find accommodation. Um, that's the kind of responsibility which we have. That's the kind of solution that we can participate in. Uh, it is within our grasp. It is not something we wait for the state government to signal. Councilman. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And I, uh, I rise against the amendment, but I note the intent. I think what's missed in this uh, amendment is that the City of Adelaide has abilities beyond simply building more housing. And I understand that some uh, councillors are not in favour of us looking to bricks and mortar, but within a housing strategy, um, specifically for social housing, within a policy and a strategy, there are many elements that have been successful in other cities that we can look to where there is little investment required by the City of Adelaide, but there is a collaborative approach 
um, that we can facilitate. And I know the Lord Mayor has spent a lot of time looking at many of those strategies and is actively, um, has been involved with the other Lord Mayors in, in pursuing and investigating those strategies. And that is things like the Homes for Homes, that is things like the Prads model, which involves private investment. So it is not only about investing the dollars, which certainly City of Adelaide can look to as well. It is not only about building new buildings, but it is about our role as um, facilitators and collaborators. So whereas I, I understand the intent is that potentially um, uh, Councillor Kouros is looking to ensure that we don't get in the nitty gritty of actually uh, doing the development of this additional social housing. The reality is there are many steps that we can be taking that have nothing to do with the state government, but but look to us to act as that, that negotiator, that facilitator, that enabler. And so we can commence that without needing to know what's happening at the state level. So I, I will be voting against the amendment only on that those grounds, not because I think it's not important that we don't understand where that fits within the state model. Of course, that's critical um, and we will always be working to ensure that we do have a good fit but I think there is still a lot of work that we can do without needing to have that additional investment from state government. We can start there, we can know that we're making progress in this area and then when there is the, uh, the further information re received from the state government we can continue the development from there and that's where I would prefer this go. So I'll be voting against it, um, not because I don't agree with the intent of ensuring that we understand the state government but simply because there's other work that we can be doing as that, that negotiator, that facilitator, that enabler, and we can look to other states to see where there are things that are already working, and we can uh, begin by looking to mirror that, which I know a lot of that work is, is underway. Thank you, Councillor John. Can I have Councillor Knoll? Um, <clears throat> no, well, obviously I'll, I'll support this motion, and the reason around that is one, well, quite logical. One, this does. This is about creating a policy. This is about us creating a policy and getting it uh, as far as we can. Now, if it's a, if we think it's a bit, a bit fanciful that we we think that we're going to solve this issue by ourselves. We are the state capital. Yes, we are a small state capital. Now, there's only so much we can do. But in conjunction with, which just came out of uh, a, a briefing about uh, a collaboration and working together. Well, that is what this is about. We can do a little, and certainly we can put our work together and have it. Uh, ready, but we're not going to deliver solutions. What some token amount of maybe 50 or 100 people or something like that, that's you know very limited, and we're going to do it at great expense because it's also where these things are not commercially viable, where they're not done in a way that is going to deliver benefit for all included uh, that are involved, then you're going to have a, a solution that's going to be short term and very flawed. And I think you know we, we're certainly exposed in, uh, in the city to the people living on the streets, but the majority of people do have some form of accommodation. Sleeping rough uh, is a small component of it. We do know that there are a lot of people who are couch surfing, things like that. They are, they are, they're not here in the city either. They're around the, in the suburbs. That is why we need to look further than just ourselves because we're not an island. We are a facilitator. We are a leader and we need to do that. But we do that in conjunction with uh, the other um, instrumentalities so that we are delivering a more complete solution. Because all the time we're going out by ourselves, is that leading others? Is that encouraging other uh, jurisdictions and that to take on these things as well? And I think uh, and the state government has a big part to play in it because they do have the those organisations already in place. I was fortunate enough last week to be at City Chats where we were talking about social and affordable housing and it was really enlightening to have uh, you know the, the major people there. And it really uh, sort of showed how and ideas on how you do that in the various business models. Now, we can't, uh, we can't do that by ourselves. These business models you bring together. So I think if we do this with the community housing and all those sorts of other opportunities and you bring those varieties of opportunities together, then you are going to start to create real solutions. And that, so hence, yes, we do our, our policy and that's what we're doing. But the outside of that, we then, we collaborate and work with the other people that are involved from state governments and other councils so that we are going to have a city-wide because again, uh, we can only do a certain amount and within our city, we are every, uh, for every dollar you spend in some other uh, suburb, we will have to spend three here. And you know there may be some forms of solution we can have here, but it's certainly going to be very limited and very expensive way to do that. And I think we should be a little bit more um, you know, inclusive with all the others, because again, uh, we're not a big city like that, and it's important. And, uh, and we did also talk about silos and things like that. Well, 
we are part of a bigger solution and, and South Australia does need that. And it's not just here in, in Adelaide, it is, it is in the, uh, the regions as well. So again, we could be a leader, a, a thought leader. And I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you, members. If not, I'll go back to Councillor Kouros to sum up. Oh, exactly. As a um, councillor Kouros said, this is not saying this, this amendment is not saying no to the policy. What we're basically saying is that let's wait until the, the government delivers their policy, which I believe the consultation is now closed, and they will have it delivered by the end of 2019, which is only a couple of months away. Basically, what what we're saying here is that. Um, with what they exactly what um, uh, the councillor apprehensive has said that once they have delivered their policy, we can align ourselves with what they're delivering and what we can do. I just think that if we just jump in right now um, and work on, on it right now, it could be a waste. Um, we could have we could end up going in a completely different direction to based on what this report is. So I'd rather wait for that. Going back to um, being a separate level of government, yes, we are a separate level of government. We're answerable to our ratepayers. Um, and as pointed out, we've got approximately 80% of our ratepayers are businesses, hence why we invested to our community only $10,000 to the, not 40, 10, to the, to the Chinese community uh, that operate outside of Guja Street. So we are looking after our businesses and we will be looking after our uh, accommodating the vulnerable in, in our city. And that is our aim. We are not looking at, you know, disrespecting them or disregarding them in any way. All I'm just basically saying is let's just wait. Members, uh, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour of the amendment, those against, Provision. that is carried. Those members voting in favour of the amendment, please rise. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerr, and Councillor Kuros. That's carried. Um, I'll go back to the moment to sum up. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I'm disappointed um, about uh, that outcome. Um, I think as a city council, we shouldn't be afraid to deal with big picture issues like homelessness, like housing. I mean, there is a risk that we can be seen as the Seinfeld Council that talks a lot about nothing um, and lacks the big picture vision to talk about some of these issues. So we shouldn't be afraid of that. But um, Lord Mayor, I will uh, support um, this uh, motion in its uh, amended form because I recognise that getting a uh, policy in place on social and affordable housing, albeit um, tied to the state government's progress, is better than nothing at all. So um, on that basis, I will support this. But I do urge um, my colleagues to be a little bit bolder, a little bit braver um, in future, because uh, this is something that the community wants us to show leadership on. Uh, thank you, members. We'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members, that takes us to recommendation five of the committee, which is the Adelaide Parklands Building Design Guidelines. And look for a mover, Councillor Martin, and a seconder, Councillor Donovan. Councillor Martin. No, Councillor Donovan. Only to say once again, thank you to administration for all the work that they've done with this and also in, uh, in taking on board feedback from councillors. Um, thank you for that work. Members? If not, back to the mover. Sometimes. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, next, we have recommendation six, Chinatown Lunar New Year Street Party. Councillor Ho and a seconder, Councillor Canole. Councillor Ho, did you wish to speak to this? <laughs> Councillor Canole. Members? Not back to the mover to sum up. Thank you. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members, that takes us to uh, recommendation number seven. Now, which is the LGA annual general meeting papers. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Sims, and a seconder, Councillor Moran. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to it? No, thank you. Councillor Sims, oh, sorry, Councillor Moran. No, thank you. Members? If not, to the move to summer. Summer. Uh, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. 
Uh, members, there was a late distribution uh, for item 9.2, which is the advice of the audit committee from the 22nd of October. And I will look for a move. Thank you, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Canole. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? So Councillor Canal, members. No, if not, back to the mover. Okay. Members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Item 10 on the agenda is the uh, Lord Mayor's report. So, good evening. Um, since my last update, I attended the Hutt Street Traders AGM the celebration of the 70th anniversary founding of the People's Republic of China, the opening day for the 2019-2020 Adelaide Bowling Club Bowl season, the State Theatre Company season 2020 opening launch, the Catherine House Gala Dinner and Rhymes Work Day. Um, along with several other members, I attended a Ghana language session with Jack Buckskin. I gave the opening address at Main Street's SA conference and for the Samstag Museum of Art Oz Asia exhibition and also took part in the uh, official Vogue Festival launch in Rundle Mall. Um, a few weeks ago, I attended the Capital City Council of Lord Mayor's AGM in Melbourne, where I also attended the Homelessness Summit and undertook a tour of an impressive new integrated services and accommodation facility run by St. Vincent de Paul's, uh, de Paul's Society. Um, yesterday, I was happy to open the Health and Housing Expo hosted by the City of Adelaide at the Adelaide Town Hall in conjunction with Shelter SA. I've also recently met with Senator Rex Patrick about the Smart City initiatives in the city, Michelle Lenzik, MLC, Minister for Human Services about housing and homelessness strategy, uh, Heather Kroll and Belinda Redmond from the Adelaide Fringe, Jason uh, Chuezon McShane, who is the director of Better Together Conference with representatives from the Adelaide Convention Bureau, which was part of a bid to attract the conference to Adelaide. Representatives of the History Trust of South Australia and the RAF regarding the epic flight centenary. And also with Matt Sweeney, who is the CEO of the Austin Fashion Festival, who was in Adelaide last week for the Vogue Fashion Festival. We had several Lord Merrill receptions, including one to celebrate the Adelaide Town Hall and the ASO being inducted into the South Australian Music Hall of Fame. Also to mark Active Ageing Week 2019, uh, also for the Australian American Association Conference being held in Adelaide and to mark 30 years of Chinatown Adelaide. We also celebrated the 2019 Bridgestone World Solar Challenge finish. And I thank you to the councillors for emceeing and attending those events. Um, it was also a great pleasure to host a morning tea to welcome the artists of Tanandi, which is the Festival of Contemporary Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Art, which is currently underway uh, with the Art Gallery of South Australia and in the City of Adelaide, and also attended the opening of the Oz Asia Festival. It's been a busy few weeks. Um, we hosted a lunch in the Queen Adelaide Room uh, with our city's key stakeholders, uh, which was an opportunity to have the input into our new strategic plan. And the Office of the Lord Mayor recently also coordinated another fabulous um, town hall open day, revamping the program with more displays, demonstrations and entertainment. And we saw more than 1,700 people visit over the course of five hours on Sunday. Finally, the City of Adelaide was recently recognised at the Australian Institute of Landscape Architects National Awards, where the North South City Bikeway Project won the Award of Excellence in the Infrastructure category. The project delivery team, Alec Whittam, Chris Ledig, and Steph Rogers were instrumental to the success of this project and will now present the award to council. I can ask you to come forward. <coughs> I think that deserves a round of applause. Well, it is. It's a glass brick. That's beautiful. <laughs> 
Members, if I could have someone move that, the report be received. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour? Thank you. Uh, the seconder was Councillor Connolly, sorry. Um, that takes us, members, to item 11 on the agenda, which is Councillor Reports. Can I have someone please move that the Councillor Reports be accepted? Thank you, Councillor Donovan, seconded Councillor Moran. Members, any discussion? If not, I'll go to the vote. For that be accepted. Those in favour? Those against? Councillor Donovan, did you? <laughs> no. Sorry, I thought there was some. Yes, yes. thank you, <laughs> Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, a couple of things. I had the opportunity to attend the IES Awards, the Illuminating Engineering Society Awards, and the City of Adelaide was the recipient of another award. I'm not sure if you're going to get to receive that tonight or not. I'll just glance, perhaps. Yes, no, next time. <laughs> um, so you'll have another opportunity to, to receive that award, but we were one of the few recipients of an award of excellence, and that was for the illumination of Topham Mall. So the, uh, the design work there, which is of course the beautiful and innovative lantern, as well as the elegant other lighting through Topham Mall. So that was very exciting for the City of Adelaide to receive that. And you will receive that, I believe, at the next council meeting. Um, I also had the opportunity to attend the Women in Sport breakfast. And one thing of note uh, for this council chamber was one of the themes that was emphasized was the need for uh, infrastructure to really enable further participation for women in sport, which is something that we certainly support within this chamber, but something for us all to keep in mind um, as further opportunities to come up for things like female change rooms and the like to ensure that there is the possibility for, for women to participate equally uh, in all sport um, as those opportunities arise for us. Uh, and of course, with yourself, Lord Mayor, I had the opportunity to attend the Right to Work Day celebrations, which were very well attended, despite it once again raining on Right to Work Day, despite the fact that it was sunny on either day, on the day either side, and to uh, enjoy the wonderful pop-up bikeway that was facilitated through Splash. So huge thank you to Splash for all the work that was done to ensure that that was possible to have a safe bikeway uh, for that day for riders to enter the Ride to Work celebration. So that was, a, that was a wonderful opportunity to once again show how Splash uh, allows us to unleash some of the possibilities within the city and a huge thank you to the Splash team for making that happen. Thank you, Councillor. Members, that takes us to item 12 on the agenda. Item 12.1 is the Brown Hill and Keswick Creek Stormwater Board Annual Report. If I could have a mover, thank you, Councillor Sims, and a seconder, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to it at all? Councillor Knoll. Members, if not, back to the mover. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, item 12.2 is the Global Cities After Dark Night Culture Forum. A mover, uh, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder, Councillor Kouros. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak to it? There is a problem. Councillor Kouros. Members? Councillor Martin? Um, Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, just a, a quick uh, question of the administration. Um, it says the City of Sydney and the state government are partnering this event. Are they partnering each other or is there a third party like a commercial organisation involved? See you. I don't believe we have the answer to that question tonight. Okay. Um, it is usual for the administration when these uh, requests come forward uh, to provide a costing such travel, uh, but there's no cost in this one. Is, is there a problem with that? Is there an attendance fee or something? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, the, um, the report suggests there's an approximate cost of $1,000. That's all we've been advised at this time. 
Sorry, I didn't hear that. Before. Sorry, Councillor Martin. It's on page 82. Yes. Um, the budget allocation is an approximate cost of $1,000 if any members are looking for that information. Okay, and that includes the conference fee. I need to take that on notice, but I assume that's the case. Okay. Look, I uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I, um, I thank uh, the administration for providing a link to the conference. Um, I did print it up and I think Councillor Hyde uh, will be very pleased. Uh, I know that he's not an early riser and this conference doesn't begin till midday uh, on the day, 12 o'clock. Oh, I beg your pardon, 12.15. And it is a, um, a packed agenda. It's being addressed by somebody from San Francisco, followed by a workshop to be announced, afternoon tea, and a couple of other events, including a keynote called House of Yes from DIY to WTF. WTF. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, there's that workshop. There's another one, and it all finishes bright and early and goes for a refuel dinner at Harpoon Harry. Lord Mayor, this is indeed an outstanding uh, schedule for a conference. It, it does mark what I think is a low watermark here at this council. It is the flimsiest excuse for a junket I have ever seen. Um, I won't support this. Uh, I think it's just extraordinary that the councillor who's in here bashing on every week about cost efficiencies, about saving money, about reducing costs, is lined up the biggest junket I have seen in years. A conference that begins at midday, half of which has no agenda and which includes such keynote addresses as House of Yes from DIY to WTF. I would ask uh, Councillor Hyde why he's going to this conference, why he's imposing this cost on the ratepayers, but he's not here. And I do hope the administration can assure me he's not on a junket somewhere. Council, Councillor Moran. Yes, I too will oppose this. Um, we haven't seen Councillor Hyde for some time, and yet he's asking for a trip almost immediately when he gets back. The, the, this is not a, um, a, a conference that God knows he needs some help, but uh, he'd be better to stick around here and learn the ropes here. Um, he's a South Ward councillor. If in any way he was a, an area councillor or a Central Ward councillor, where the night culture is important to the city, I would have a different view. But this is a very flimsy conference. He is not, he's a residential, in a residential ward. Uh, he hasn't been seen for many weeks. I suggest that the young man stay here and knuckle down and not flit off to Sydney. Councillor Kouros. I think it's a little bit unfair to say that without him being here, being able to defend it. Exactly. Um, so uh, <laughs> that's not the point. The point is that he's not here and to actually say that without giving him the opportunity to respond is not appropriate. Um, so I'm sure he will provide us with a report right after this uh, conference, correct? That's that is what correct. He's entitled, uh, he's entitled to do. So. Um, I think we have to give him the benefit. There must be a reason to why he would want to attend this conference and for us to, um, you know, just assume the worst of him is not appropriate. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Abraham's in there. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think it's good to think outside the square a bit and do things uh, differently. You know, Albert Einstein defined insanity as doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So let's try and do this differently this time. I'm actually looking forward to all the weird and wonderful things that Councillor Hyde will bring back to uh, this council in his report. Right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> members, members, thank you. If we could go to the vote, thank you. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise. <coughs> Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canal, Councillor Ho, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Curves. Thank you, that's carried. Uh, members, I have 12.3, progress of motions by elected members. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran and a seconder. 
Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it at all? No, Councillor Sims. No, Members? If not, back to the mover. Uh, thank you. Members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, members, that takes us to uh, 12.4. Now, this one, um, I might actually ask the CEO just to do a quick preamble on this one because it's a little bit, um, yeah. <laughs> it's going to take sure. some time. Sure. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Leading up to this report, Council recall a number of designated informal gatherings where we've discussed the proposals before you. Uh, this has included the presentation you recall from the Office of Local Government. Alex Hart came along and spoke to us. Um, the report has been prepared following those discussions and um, to facilitate the proposals by the government's due date, which is the 1st of November, so pretty soon. In the workshops, there's been a, quite a degree of consensus um, regarding the majority of the 72 proposals. But as we said at the last meeting, um, procedurally, um, what we're going to do is um, deal with those items that there was not consensus of and we talked about the fact that we don't agree that this is the venue and the, the appropriate time to, to actually um, democratically work through them. So um, this is required for each of them to be, to be gone through. Um, and so what's going to happen now is the Lord Mayor is going to work us through those items that we feel that require and deserve some, some debate. So thanks Lord Mayor. So, um, what we will do is procedurally, I'll first take us through one, parts one, two, and three, and then we will go, because part one seeks the authorisation CEO to submit the response. Then I'll go back to part two, and I will seek uh, us to determine a position on each of those. So I'll go through them one by one. Um, uh, we, I will be asking a council member to raise a motion on each of those as to whether you support column A or column B. Um, and then in part three, um, it will be asked to note that uh, we're going to uh, write on your behalf to the state government. So unless we need any changes to that, that will be remain the same. Um, as I go through each um, each one. I think given that we've already had most of the discussions um, that um, uh, we can actually just vote on each one as we go. Councillor Martin, did you have a question? Uh, yes, two questions, Lord Mayor. Just uh, to confirm that there will be a procedural motion and then you will take us through the pages beginning at 114. Correct. Through until 119. Correct. And we will be asked to vote on column A and column B. Yes. And will the letter that goes to the minister advise that it was a unanimous vote or that it was simply a vote of council, not necessarily unanimous? It will be a position of council. So it will not say it's unanimous or there were. No, it will be a issues. position of council. Um, so when the attachment goes through with the position of council on each of those amendments, it will go through whatever the position of council is. And therefore, in that circumstance, um, it may be open to members of council to place a separate submission. Absolutely. And Thank members you. members are welcome, any of the members are welcome to place a separate submission on any of those items. Councillor Kouris, did you have a question? Sorry, I can't hear you. Could you put your microphone on? Please? Sorry. I can't download the document. I'm not sure what's wrong with my. Okay. One. No, I've got one. Um, they will be coming up on the screen as oh, I go through each of those. Just that's let great. me know, and if not, I can see no, if I can get right. a copy that's for right. you. That's right. Technology. Technology. Um, thank you. Um, so, members, as a procedural, um, I will actually ask someone to move that we accept parts one, two, and three, and then I'll go back to part two. So, thank you, Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Ho. Um, is there any discussion on that, members? If not, I'll go back to the mover, Councillor Moran. Summed up, Lord Mayor. Thank you, members. If I could go to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. I will now go to. And my apologies if this takes us a little while. So I'm on page 114 of um, the paper. Um, we will go to item number 1.4.
Um, and essentially I'm asking for a mover to either support or not support column A or column B. So I'll ask for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today on 1.4. Column A. Column A. You have a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Canal. Um, members, so if we're happy with that, so we are looking at, so column A, which says we support the LG reform proposal in 1.4. Four. So I will go to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Now, um, thank you, members. We'll go to 1.5. So I will look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham, today. And in support of what, ma'am? Of 1.5. Of, of column A or column B? Oh, sorry, column A. Yes. Column A. Do I have a seconder? Yeah. Councillor Canole. Uh, members, I will ask you to vote in support or. And you said there's no opportunity to register. Can we call, call it a division? You, you, can, you can call a division, Councillor. Sure. So, yes, you can as we go, which will be recorded in our minutes. So, um, so I have a mover and a seconder for. Uh, in support of column A. Uh, members, if I can go to the vote, thank you. Those in favour, those against, division. that is carried. A division has been called. Those members voting in favour of column A for 1.5, please rise. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canal, Councillor Ho, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kerr, and Councillor Kuros. <laughs> That is carried. Uh, members, item 1.6. I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Oh, and column, B. column B. And I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Moran. Um, so, members, we are voting on column B, which is not to support the LGA reform proposal 1.6. I will ask for the vote. Those in favour of column B, those against, Division. that fails. Those members voting in favour of column B for item 1.6, please rise. Councillor Martin, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims. That was lost. Um, so I then, if we are going to adopt column A, I need uh, another mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, and a, a second to Councillor Knoll. Members, those in favour? Those against? Thank you. We don't need to do that because we've done it the first one. Right, got that one. Um, I will now go to number 1.7, and I will look for a mover for either column A or column B. Uh, was that you were you were officially moving, Councillor Martin? Oh, Councillor Martin, column B, and Councillor Sims the second. Um, members will go to the vote. We are voting in support of 1.7 column B, um, which is that we do not support the LGA reform. So those in favour of column B, those against, that is lost. Those members voting in favour of column B to item 1.7, please rise. Councillor Martin, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims. That is lost. Um, I will now ask for a mover for the alternate, which is column A. Uh, thank you, Councillor Canole. And a seconder, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members, I'll ask you to go to the vote. This is for in support of column A of 1.7. Those in favour? Those against? That is lost. That, that is carried. My, my apologies, that is carried. Um, I now go to item 1.13 uh, and I will look for a mover. I've got Councillor Martin. Which one are you moving, Councillor Martin? Column A. Thank you. And a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Members, those in favour? 
those against. I could call a division on that one, but I won't. Um, that is carried. Um, we now go to 1.13 part A. Um, I will look for a mover, Councillor Martin. Column A. Column A. Uh, and a seconder, thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, members, those in favour, we're voting in support of column A for 1.13 A. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. You can vote with us sometimes, you know. So, um, members, we go to 2.2 um, and I'll look for a mover. Councillor Martin. Column A. Column A. Uh, I'll look for a second, members. Thank you, Councillor Ho. Uh, members, I'll go to the vote. Those in favour of column A for 2.2, those against. I just, I'm just looking for a vote, Councillor Kouros, Councillor Kira. 2.2, we're voting in favour of column A, which is supporting the LGA reform proposal. In favour? Yeah. Okay, I guess that is carried. <laughs> Um, 2.3, I look for a motion. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Column A. Column A. And I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Ho. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? Councillor Kerr, are you voting on that one? In favour, that is carried. Uh, members 2.6. Um, oh, thank you, Councillor Martin. What would you like to Column move? A. Column A. And I look for a seconder, Councillor Sims. Members, we're voting for 2.6 in support of Column A, which is supporting the LGA reform proposal. I'll ask for a vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, 2.7, Councillor Martin. Column A. Column A and a seconder. Councillor Sims. Members, we're voting for 2.7 column A, which is supporting the LGA reform proposal. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, 2.12. I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Which would you like to move? Column B. Column B. And I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That's great. Thank you. Um, members, 3.4. I will look for a motion. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Column A. Column A. Uh, members, so 3.4, we are voting in support. Oh, I'll look for a second, sorry. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That's... Sorry, I'm sorry, members, I'll just take the vote again. So those in favour of column A? Those against? That is carried. Now, so we are now at uh, item 4.7, and I will look for a mover, Councillor Martin. Which would you like to move? Column B. Column B, that we do not support the LGA reform proposal. I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Members, those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Um, item 4.8. Councillor Martin. Um, uh, column A. Column A. I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Sims. To the vote, members, those in favour of column A? 
Those against, that is carried. Uh, now, members, there are two other proposals. If we wish those to be included in our feedback, um, then I would need those to be moved. I move as Lord Mayor. Um, do you move for both or one? I'll move them separately. Yes, if I can, I'll mark call that 4.9. Um, which is the impose a cap on expenditure related to elections and um, column A or B? And um, yes, support and imposition of a cap. Column A and look for a seconder, Councillor Martin. Um, members, those in favour? Those against? Division. That is, that fails. And a division has been called. Those members voting in favour of column A for other item, for the first hash in the list. Councillor Martin, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims. Um, that's lost as, as it's... Um, oh, do I need... Oh. Uh, members, if we have a position, I'm not sure whether we need to vote that we don't support it. No, um, because it's it's lost, so we're good with that. And so the next one I'll call 4.2, which is increased requirements for disclosure of donations before elections. Uh, Councillor Sims, what would you like to move? I move that we support increased requirements for disclosure of donations before elections. So column A and Councillor Abrahim today as a seconder. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, so that will be included. That is excellent. Um, so members, that that completes um, item 12.4. Thank you for that. Um, I will now go to uh, item 12.5. Um, I will need a nomination of the floor for someone to take the chair. Councillor Abraham today. Oh, Councillor Donovan. Uh, I Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, are you happy to take the chair? Members, can we vote that Councillor Moran can take the chair? Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. Uh, members, I'm vacating the chair because I'm declaring a conflict of interest because I have a, a material conflict with this item. Councillors, the item is 12.5. Um, Lord Mayor Travel to New Zealand, November 2019, and we have a recommendation that Council notes the invitation. Uh, notes the draft itinerary and approves the Lord Mayor's travel to New Zealand from 2026 20, November 2019. Do I have a mover? Councillor Knoll and seconded by Councillor Ho. Councillor Knoll, would you like to speak to this? Councillor Ho, do we have any speakers? <laughs> yeah, look, just briefly, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, sorry, Acting Lord Mayor, Acting Chair. One day you never know. Presiding Officer, <laughs> yes. <laughs> be hard to move you. Um, look, I, I, I want to make clear that I have less concern about this itinerary than the last one that I saw, although it is um, pretty light on detail. But I just want to make the point that um, I am going to vote against this, uh, not because I think uh, the Lord Mayor is going to uh, uh, any um, uh, drinks fests as uh, others might, but simply that I don't agree with the concept of uh, travel by elected members using up ratepayers' money uh, for these kinds of trips, uh, and it's not a, a particular reference to this Lord Mayor, but a, a view that I hold. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Are there anybody else? Uh, Councillor Sims? Thank you, Chair. Uh, look, I take a different view to Councillor Martin on uh, this matter. Whilst I, I do understand um, the importance of ensuring rigour around the spending of public money, this is a capital city. Uh, the Lord Mayor is the head of um, this capital city council. I think it is appropriate that we forge uh, relationships with other councils. Christchurch is a sister city for the city of Adelaide. Um, and I think it would be very beneficial for the Lord Mayor to uh, visit and to um, build those relationships. So I'm happy to support this. 
Thank you, Councillor Sims. Are there any other views, contrary or otherwise? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Knoll to sum up. Summed up. Ask you to vote. Those in favour, raise your hand. Those against? Thank you. The ayes have it. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Except for the heaviness of this chair. Um, members, that takes us to questions on notice. Uh, please note that item 13.1 has been withdrawn for this evening. That takes us to 13.2, uh, which is Councillor Martin unsolicited proposals policy. Would you like me to read the question, Mayor, or are you? Would you like to put your microphone yes. on, Councillor? Sure. Could the administration advise if the council's unsolicited proposal policy allows the City of Adelaide to withdraw from the process associated with any unsolicited bid, and if so, at what stage or stages in the process? Would you like me to read the response, Councillor, or would Thank you, you happy to take it as read? No, I'm happy to read. City of Adelaide Unsolicited Proposals Guidelines sets out the process by which the Council will receive and consider unsolicited proposals. In accordance with the guidelines, submissions, terms and conditions, the City of Adelaide may at any stage of the process of receiving, considering and negotiating any unsolicited proposal 1.1, accept or reject any unsolicited proposal 1.2, discontinue negotiations with any proponent. Point two, the process by which the City of Adelaide will receive and consider proposals is three-staged. In addition to the above general rights, at the end of each stage, Council may resolve that all or part of a proposal is not suitable for further consideration and its consideration under the guidelines will come to an end. In accordance with guidelines, submissions, terms and conditions, where City of Adelaide resolves to withdraw from a process associated with any unsolicited proposal, City of Adelaide will not be liable for any expenses or losses incurred by a proponent. Number four, while there may be no legal or financial consequences for City of Adelaide in deciding to withdraw from any unsolicited proposal process at any time, consideration should be given to reputational implications. And last point, it may be arguable that in certain circumstances a party has not acted in good faith where discretion is exercised to unilaterally terminate an unsolicited proposal process based on change of mind. Careful consideration should be given to withdrawal of any unsolicited proposal process in a specific circumstance to ensure City of Adelaide exercises its powers reasonably so not to deter future proposals being submitted. Thank you, members. That takes us to uh, item 14, which is questions without notice. Councillor Sims. Thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Given the recent closure of the iconic East Terrace Continental, can administration please advise what action has been taken to assist East End businesses following the closure of the RAH? Thank you, Councillor Sims, CEO. Year three, Lord Mayor, for around about a year or so, we've been doing a fair package of work in the East End. I'll ask Ian to just give us some comments. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. Just back through the chair. Uh, I think we're all disappointed around the East uh, Continental. Uh, it's an iconic cafe that we all know well. And obviously, with 5,000 less foot traffic going past your door, is always going to be a pretty challenging environment for them as operators, despite the forewarning and knowledge of the change. And on top of that, changes around the O-Barn and light rail. Uh, but there have been a raft of things that the City of Adelaide, um, both this administration and previous administration have been involved in um, to try and stimulate footfall in particular, which is such a key thing for um, that sector. We've supported the Vogue Festival in 2017, 2018, 2019, and progressively have brought that festival a bit further down through um, Rundle Street from the Rundle Mall. Um, this year, the winter in the East End, which was six weeks of activation, was a fantastic uh, stimula stimulation for uh, particularly the food and beverage uh, sector down there. Um, East End Unleashed, which was delivered in February and March, which included a range of road closures, which again creates ambience and spaces for the public to interact. 
Um, the East End Creative Lighting Plan was something that was implemented, which included new lighting for Ebenezer Place and Varden Place, which again created great spaces for people to congregate. And the feedback from a lot of the operators down on those streets has been extremely positive. Supported a host of events, including Sala, Tasting Australia, um, obviously the Fringe, which has a pretty significant footprint down that part of the city, uh, three day horse trials, Christmas in the city, um, Adelaide Superloop. Um, and also a range of workshops and training sessions and marketing activity and ongoing support of the precinct group. Um, there's also been the waiving, um, recent waiving of outdoor dining fees. So that's probably a, a quick snapshot. I'm happy to circulate uh, a more comprehensive note back through e news if that would help the collective members. Thanks, Lord. Thank you. We will go to item 15 on the agenda. 15.1, Councillor Martin, ACP planning. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, as it's a uh, motion on notice, is there any requirement to read it? Uh, not if you don't wish to, but I will look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, and Lord Mayor, may I ask that the matter be taken in two parts, as it is in two parts? Uh, you may. Thank you. If that's all right with seconder, yes. Um, and first, may I begin by asking a question of the administration. Um, if the policy is that we can be certain only the building owner is advised that an ACB, ACP planted building that is potentially uh, combustible presents a potential fire risk with an as yet um, absence of any legislative requirement for owners to do uh, the right thing, are there any protections for buyers of buildings which have potentially um, a combustible ACB cladding that requires rectification before they make the purchase? In other words, if you are on the open market and there is no disclosure <laughs> other than from the owner of the building who has no legislative requirement in respect of ACP cladding, is there any other mechanism by which they are advised? CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, that's a technical question. Shanti, are you in a position to answer that? Uh, through the Chair, we're not aware that there is, a, there is any other mechanism. Okay, so you could buy a building and not know that it has potentially combustible aluminium composite panel. Uh, through the chair, the process that uh, DIPTI has uh, required councils, not just the City of Adelaide, but other councils with ACP cladding uh, on their buildings is to notify the building owner, not the potential building owner. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, look, I just wanted that clarified. Um, I just want to say this is a, a pretty sorry affair, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, there is no transparency around this. Um, and when I asked for transparency, the, uh, the minister, Minister Canole, uh, called me reckless. Um, and I'm hoping this isn't a familiar view. Well, I did have a smile earlier this <laughs> evening, um, but um, uh, it, uh, it isn't my view, as it is the ministers, that uh, uh, terrorists and arsonists are waiting for the addresses of buildings so that they can ignite them. Um, I'm sure there are other targets that are much more flammable in this city. Um, the problem here is that we have a state government which has public buildings and private residences, and I know that because I've spoken to strata managers in the last week who are aware of state government owned private residences, which are affected by combustible ACP cladding. And they're creating secrecy around those sites and saying to local government, um, well, We'll look after those, but you fix the rest. You fix all of the, the buildings uh, throughout the city of Adelaide. Uh, and I mean the broader city of Adelaide, not the local government area city of Adelaide. Um, let me deal first with the secrecy because it doesn't aid anyone. Um, uh, if you have a look at the documents that I circulated all the, earlier today from the Insurance Council of Australia, the body which says uh, whether or not you are covered by insurance, it makes clear in their strategy, um, uh, which relies on the Engineers Australia guidelines, that uh, everybody, stakeholders, 
including clients entering a building. You'll see that at page six, um, including where there are offices and tenants that people are consulted, not only about the ACP, but about fire evacuation plans and about plans for rectification. That's the policy, it's clear in the document. Um, it wants complete transparency. Um, it also makes clear that there should be a level of awareness um, among those passing around the potential fire traps. Uh, the document refers to the risk to neighbouring buildings uh, and uh, for people passing beneath buildings with ACP, which is potentially flammable because there's a risk of injury or fire or death even from what happens when this material uh, uh, becomes uh, a light, and that is that it falls off the sides of buildings as it did at the Grenfell Towers. Um, now, I just don't understand how excluding people from that knowledge, keeping the community in the dark, actually aids anyone. May I have another minute, Lord Mayor? Members? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, and the problem is that the state government in requiring this secrecy, which is at odds with what the industry, and let me tell you, these are extraordinarily detailed guidelines, the likes of which I have not seen. Um, the state government is pulling the city into this uh, web of secrecy. And what this motion, uh, I hope, achieves is that I want our administration to go to the government and say, we don't want to be part of this because this doesn't serve anyone well. I'm not suggesting that immediately we publish the list of buildings, but I am asking that we do that. And similarly, I don't know why we're agreeing to supervise this rectification. I honestly don't understand why, because the truth is that many building owners just won't be able to afford it. There was a report in the media at the weekend uh, where uh, strata uh, organisations were saying that planning rectification in Sydney apartments would cost of the order an average $60,000. Now, already people are saying we can't afford that. That is likely to be the case in South Australia, and it will lead unquestionably to lengthy court battles to receive compensation in order to rectify uh, the circumstances. And simply the Victorian system, which provides for uniform coverage managed by the state government with a fund which is reimbursed by building levies and the state government's own judicial action, its own legal action, will provide a much quicker rectification, better public safety, and an outcome in which local government isn't in any way implicated in any adverse fashion. Now, I'm asking that we as a council simply ask the government to do what appears to be in the insurance council documents, uh, in other documents recognised as the best system in Australia. We do, we do not need to be the state government's fixer. Thank you. I'll just, uh, before I go to Councillor Sims, I'll just ask the CEO. Sorry, Lord Mayor, I'd just like to clarify, Councillor Martin. So item one is you are asking the administration to publicly release immediately the documentation. That's to be clear. Um, look, I accept that there are protocols. I accept that the uh, advice that's been made available today would create a problem. And so I am uh, prepared to allow some discretion in that to the administration in terms of talking with government and making clear that that is not our preferred position. Um, and look, if somebody wishes to move a slight variation to accommodate that more explicitly, I'm, I'm happy to accept that. I believe it's important to be very clear. I'm happy to move a variation to that effect. So something along the lines of uh, pending further discussion with the state government, would that satisfy that? And delete the word immediately. Yeah. Are you worth clarifying council's liability pending further discussion? That was the... Um, Councillor Donovan. Um, and lose the word immediately, is that your intention? Mm -hmm.
Uh, I, well, I, I, do you wish me to speak to this or should the uh, person asking for the variation speak to it? So, just accept the variation. I'm happy to accept, accept the variation. variation. And the seconder can accept the variation. Sorry, sorry Lord Mayor, could we just um, sorry, clarify sorry, and um, take some advice yep. just to help? Just, yeah, sure. So just take a few moments if we can. So, Councillor Martin, um, the advice is the words uh, pending discussion um, because uh, the, the view of the State Government may still be that we aren't to release that, so we can say pending approval from the State Government is the suggested amendment because otherwise um, I'll, I'll leave that with the floor So, um, because um, yeah, which we can either accept or not. So, yeah, so members, yes. Uh, so, yes. Move a seconder. Thank you. And the meeting. Are you happy to accept the variation? That's a yes or no, members. I just need to see if you're happy to accept the variation. Um, if I could see a show of hands to accept the variation. Thank you, members. So I will now go to Councillor Sims as the seconder. And back to the floor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I, I support this, and in particular, um, the uh, variation um, that's been achieved, I think now really um, means that there is no reason for uh, councillors not to support this. I think it's very important that we um, have a strong position on this and that we advocate for the interests of our um, residents and ratepayers. Um, I have to say I've been mightily disappointed with the state government's response to this uh, to date. To seek to demonise Councillor Martin for showing leadership on the issue I think was a grave error of judgement on behalf of the Minister. It's not reckless to speak out about the community's right to know this kind of information. Um, in fact, I think it's the duty of elected officials to raise these kind of issues. So I was disappointed by the government's response. I think actually the government should be stepping up here. Um, after all, they have been the architects of the uh, planning system that has led to uh, the building crisis that we're you know, facing in our state, the dodgy building crisis we're facing in our state in terms of use of cladding. It's the same crisis that has hit uh, cities like Melbourne and Sydney, and it's a result of poor oversight on behalf of governments, and it's a result of poor decision making and that which has waved through developments and without appropriate oversight. Um, it's been about allowing developers to make money and use inferior products, and I think that's disappointing. So the state government should really step up, show some leadership and take responsibility. And I think the idea of a fund as has been proposed in this motion um, makes perfect sense. They have a responsibility to act in this area. I think we also have a responsibility to do what we can to provide information to our residents um, and ratepayers about the risk that they may face. I have had um, members of the public contact me in alarm about this, um, and I can totally understand their concerns. I think they have a right to know, and we should be doing everything we can to get them this information. Thank you. I have Councillor Moran. Oh, yes, but there's not much to add. I'm, I'm actually just a bit disappointed that it's been softened to this degree. Um, I mean, what if a building burnt down while we're pending approval to get the state government? How would we feel? I mean, the Lord, Lord Mayor sent us some legal advice today, but what's the humanitarian? What, where's the humanity in this? Um, how would you feel if one of the skyscrapers went out filled with families and young children and everything and we were pending approval of the state government? The state government probably won't. Um, so I would have preferred that we just release it and take the take the hit. Um, I think it's the only moral thing to do. Other councils have done it, uh, released their lists. So I don't understand why we are so still again kowtowing. I know there's a worry that we will then have to bear some cost to it. But there must be a way around that. 
Um, and as I said, other councils have done it. I mean, in Melbourne, they've released their lists. Um, people are reasonable. Um, uh, that what they've done there is ask that um, sprinkler systems be, uh, that other um, forms of um, fire um, uh, care has been taken in the buildings and uh, Melbourne hasn't see a, seen a mass rush out of those buildings or any lawsuits. People understand they were put up legally and be careful that the, the accusation that terrorists and arsonists will do it, that the terrible catastrophe in England wasn't a terrorist or an arsonist. It was just a, a fridge that um, uh, malfunctioned. So I, I can't carry the guilt and the possibility of the awful tragedy of it happening in the years that the state government drag its feet to work out how they can get away with not paying too much money. And, and let's face it, the Property Council will not be keen on these lists going out. They will be telling the government, we need time, we need this. We shouldn't be kowtowing to the building owners. We should be looking after the people living in the buildings. And I'm sick of us being a branch of the Property Council. We should go stronger than this. I will vote for this, but I'm disappointed it's been weakened so much. Uh, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just uh, want to clarify that we're talking about releasing the, um, releasing out publicly once the state government has released it to us. Uh, has approved the release. Yeah, okay. So this has got no legal, legal implications against the council in doing so. See ya. Through you, Lord Mayor, there's no legal implications. There are, however, insurance implications for us. And the mutual liability scheme today has written to us and has written to all councils throughout South Australia, um, confirming that should in fact the council release a list of those buildings, uh, we would potentially put in, in um, jeopardy our insurance cover. That is a letter that's been provided to you, you've seen it. So there is a, a very real insurance concern for us as a council. So even if we release it after this, been released by the state government. It's done. Through you, Lord Mayor. Look, I believe that should the state government authorise us to release, we would obviously work through our process and we would come back to you with that information before we would do anything. I think that's a logical thing to do. Uh, I, would, I would just caution you that we would need to take some very clear advice from our insurers because we can't put our rate payers at risk yes. from a financial point of view. That is exactly my point here, uh, putting our rate payers at risk. Um, so, I, I mean, I understand Councillor Martin's intent here, um, and administration's advice is very clear. Um, uh, the local government association and, and the, uh, that we've, we've, we've been given has advised councils on the liability risk and uh, in releasing the information. And I understand that the state government have uh, are in control of this. Um, the advertiser reported that uh, they have appointed uh, Wendy Kampara, a former local government associate CEO, as a cutting response coordinator. Um, it is her job to ensure that the building um, owners fulfil their legal and moral obligations to notify the tenants and occupants. Um, I'm a little bit concerned um, about getting um, being involved in releasing any documentation without the state government's authorisation. I'm concerned the fact that this could affect us uh, with our liability. Um, I would, I'm still very concerned about, um, about it all and I want some assurance that if when we do, that it's not going to affect us at all. Um, because we have got our rate pays to consider, um, although you know I know that the state government are working, working closely with landlords, with, with owners of properties, tenants, and uh, and uh, uh, strata companies. Um, I rather would leave that in their court for them to sort out, rather than being a liability for us exposing any information. Um, you know, in answer to Councillor Martin's um, question, I would assume that with a, if a contract is on a property to a potential purchaser with these risks associated risk, I would assume that it's the agent's responsibility to ensure that he discloses that information um, if required, because I would assume that the Strata Corporation would have that information. Um, so I would, I would only assume, I would say that there would be procedures in place. I, I don't know, so I'm, I would, I'm only putting it out there. Um, as long as this hasn't got any implications to us legally, I'm, I'm happy to support it, but I, I need to be assured of that. So I'm not sure if you want to respond to that, see you. 
Through you, Lord Mayor, looks entirely lawful for council to ask the question of the state government. So from a legal perspective, there is no issue. Um, I have Councillor Carroll. I mean, uh, I suppose when you look now look through the progression of this, this uh, uh, the cladding, etc., and, and how it's been unfolding, and we listen to the rhetoric and the exaggeration by some of the people here, which is part of the problem. Uh, and we are talking about um, a, you know, a building in a different country with completely different situations. I mean, there are uh, flammable buildings all around Australia. Um, we have a few ourselves because of the, this, the construction of them. But that's what you do with those, that's how you manage those that makes the risk or not. Um, I mean, you cannot uh, take that poor tragedy of the, the Grenfell Tower um, and how, they, uh, how it unfolded as something that is here. I mean, we have our own regulations, we have our own ways of, of dealing with it. We have uh, different, uh, completely different uh, sort of mitigation strategies and they're all known. Um, we don't have 50 old buildings that don't have sprinkler systems, that don't have uh, uh, linked fire alarms, that have smoked uh, uh, you know, fire doors that don't function. I mean, uh, there was a whole litany of, of problems with an old building that was poorly maintained and then we had complaints from those residents inside. So there was a whole bunch of stuff around that and the cladding pulled off the wall for efficiencies and those efficiencies were designed for you know the uh, mitigation of, of uh, you know uh, temperature and climate change and really it was just a funnel so there was a whole bunch of stuff around there that it made it so much worse as a as a tragedy and the fact that people were told to stay in the building until they realized it was they had to they should have left uh, with all of these issues um, that led to the tragedy and and a fire door that was only one I should say fire escape that was blocked the only one there's a whole bunch of stuff that reason why you have a problem. Here we have a completely different situation. Yes, there are there are uh, things that need to be fixed, and I'm pretty sure that they're you know they're being done very quickly. Uh, and this over exaggeration is part of the problem. And uh, it, it, these are managed risks like so many others. Um, and I, uh, I'm sure that uh, the fire departments, etc., are already managing these issues, and they're doing it in a sensitive way. Why? Because. We then have these issues where, you, where people go a little bit, uh, you know, over the top, and I think it, it's not—it doesn't serve anybody uh, any real purpose to do that. And I'm pretty sure also that these buildings will be dealt with very quickly. So it's done in a, in a measured way and uh, in a cautious way, so that we are achieving the, the right outcome, but not making things worse and also over exaggerating. Because I mean, Adelaide, I would, uh, from what I gather. Uh, is not has not got any of these issues like any of the other cities. It is very, uh, by comparative, quite minor, and uh, particularly the city of Adelaide, I believe. I'm not sure. That's just um, so. You know, it, we do have to think about that. And you know, saying about dodgy buildings, etc. None of these buildings were here. We talk about Sydney and Melbourne. We don't have that regulations here. We don't have that oversight here. We have something much more strenuous. So therefore, I believe we are certainly going to uh, solve this issue. We're going to do it in a in a, in a considered way, and in, and indeed, we'll you know, progress quite quickly. Thank you. Uh, would anybody else like to speak to this? If not, oh, Councillor Abraham's name. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just briefly, um, I just wanted to clarify something for all the members here. Um, we were told earlier that this was all a, uh, uh, a big secret, but I just want to point to administration's uh, uh, comments. Point seven, the City of Adelaide's Building Fire Safety Committee has issued letters to advise relevant building owners of the outcome of the audit, which means the building owners already know uh, what the issues are. So I think the difference here, I'm just trying to understand what the, I guess, well, what the intent is. Um, if the building owners already know that uh, there are issues with those buildings, then is it just a matter of standing on top of a, a roof with a loudspeaker and publicly de declaring all the addresses and all the buildings, or are we actually going to those building owners one by one and having, having that conversation with them, telling them that there's an issue with the building? So I think that's something that, uh, that members need to be mindful of if, uh, if they are thinking about uh, uh, supporting or, uh, or not supporting this, uh, this amendment. Thank you. I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Look, I think I, think I can help uh, the councillor with his concern. Yes, building owners are being informed. Our, our own administration has done that. But you have to understand, in buildings, there are strata arrangements where there may be 60 or 80 offices. 
Point of order, um, Lord Mayor, does he meant to talk to the chair or to Councillor Abraham today? Lord Mayor, I, I was talking to my colleague, um, but anyway, look, anything I say or do doesn't mean Councillor Kouros' approval, so I, I accept that. Um, I was attempting to explain that the issue is that the actual tenants, whether they're strata owners, uh, strata owners may know, tenants won't. Uh, and so throughout office buildings and residences, the only obligation on the landlord or owner at least, is to say to the tenant, you are living or working in a building that has ACP combustible flatting uh, and you may be in danger. There is no legal requirement to do so. We're relying on them doing the right thing. And this is about making sure that everybody is aware of the risk. Now, in some cases, strata managers are telling me, and I would think Councillor Kouros as a real estate agent would know this, strata managers are telling me that uh, they are not aware of all of the implications for buildings yet, other than the advice from the City of Adelaide or other areas, and they are a bit uncertain about what their advice is to other strata uh, uh, owners within the building. Um, it, it is, look, it is a mangled, mangled situation at the moment, and we are in this pickle because there is this secrecy around it, and what this seeks to do is to provide a view to the government that it is much better simply to identify the buildings without the rancor that uh, Councillor um, uh, Canole refers to, uh, without any histrionics to say, here is the risk. We think you should be in a position to be able to mitigate that risk. And it is much bigger than us. I mean, for example, the Engineer Society recommendation is that, and this is the Insurance Council's view, that wherever there is a sprinkler system now in this city, if it is supplied by electricity, it should also be backed up by diesel. That is new. That doesn't happen in many circumstances. And that is one of the risks in uh, this scenario here. Now, uh, I understand the point that was made about the commissioner. We have no information about the commissioner. In fact, the commissioner keeps saying to the media, call me in a week or two when I have some information and I might be able to tell you what my role is and how that role will be carried out. But the point, and just to wind up Lord Mayor, the point that I wish to make in this is that we are becoming embroiled in a very, very big messy issue and there is no reason for us to be there. We should be asking the government without any shadow of a doubt to manage this affair, not to leave it Thank to you, us. Councillor Martin. Um, as requested, I'm going to take this in parts. So um, I will ask council to vote on part one. Uh, those in favour? Those against? That's carried. And part two, those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you. Members, that takes us to um, item 15.2, Councillor Martin, North Adelaide Parking. If I could just for a moment. Um, I have a family situation I just need to attend to. Councillor Donovan, do you mind just taking the chair for a moment? Just be a few minutes. So, item fifteen point two, Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to your motion? Move uh, your motion. Yeah, yes. Um, thank you. Acting Chair, it's coming confusing. We've got so many presiding officers today. Um, does she need a seconder? Yeah. Do we have a seconder? Yeah. Councillor Sims? Uh, thank you. Um, I'm sorry uh, to take so long. Um, look, uh, Councillor Kouris's motion to uh, scrap the North Adelaide um, um, 
uh, parking and uh, traffic management um, trial and plan um, has caused some disappointment. And in fact, you saw the uh, petition earlier this evening from residents in Kingston Terrace. Um, but it's also uh, disappointed uh, businesses. Um, now, uh, Councillor Kouros's plan has reinstated 311 parking bays from timed to long time to 10 hours in North Adelaide. And um, if you're a resident in North Adelaide, um, you understand that anything that is 10 hours or untimed is pretty much taken up by city commuters uh, from seven o'clock in the morning. They flood in and they use North Adelaide as a car park, uh, jumping on to the, uh, the free bus to the city, denying, by the way, I might add uh, for members, denying revenue to the uh, car parks of the city of Adelaide by using North Adelaide as their parking area. Um, one of the centrepieces of that local area traffic and parking management plan, uh, one which uh, went through a lot of consultation, particularly with traders and with the precinct association, was a proposal for on-street permits for local businesses. Now, uh, this scheme was to have allowed business owners, uh, many of whom uh, don't have parking spaces, because as you all know, and many of the buildings in North Adelaide are old buildings designed when there are only horses and carts. Um, and uh, it would, in principle, allow them designated area on street parking permits. So when they arrive a couple of hours after the commuters, they are assured of a parking space. That's, that's the long and the short of it. Um, as a consequence of these changes, that is no plan for business parking on street permits, it means that these people are now relegated to the shorter term parking, two hours, one hour, 30 minutes around the streets playing the shuffle. And what that, do, what that does is it denies the other businesses the parking spaces for customers. So uh, people patronising uh, retail or even Councillor Kouros' restaurants, people patronising those areas would find it more difficult to find a parking spot. Now, um, I think we can go some way to ameliorating this uh, difficult situation, this disappointment for people like the Precinct Association, um, by asking the administration to try to salvage the remnants of another part of that local area traffic management plan um, and come back to us and tell us how we can create what, what was the intention of council this year, a scheme that will serve business owners in North Adelaide. Now, um, it's, it's not a plan that I'm asking for. It is a proposal and investigation about how it might work and therefore I would ask you to support that. And point of clarification from CEO. It's real or mayor. Councillor Martin, the, 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 the date on item two of 1st of December, I'm advised may be problematic just from a capacity to provide a report. Are you flexible in that date in any way? You, sure. Could, <laughs> Is the third or fourth all right? Or? <laughs> <laughs> um, I will look at, I'm happy to make it first meeting in the new year. That would be appreciated. Okay. Councillor Sims, do you wish to speak? Reserve my right. Councillor Moran. Yes, well, could I just ask the administration a couple of questions first? Sorry, um, just to pause, Councillor Moran, are you happy for that uh, variation, Councillor Sims, as the seconder? I yes. And the meeting, are you happy for that variation by a show of hands? Those against? And that is through. Thank you, Councillor Moran. I'm getting a bit depressed by this investigate and, um, and do reports. Could I ask uh, through you, presiding member, what happened to my women's and children's parent and family override stickers that I successfully moved recently in council? Is that being investigated? Um, has it been investigated? Claire, can you ask um, Through the presiding member, um, I, I would need to um, go back and look at the um, undertaking or the original motion. There has been an update uh, provided to members tonight on all motions um, from this council term. It doesn't ring a bell, so I would need to take advice. Okay, well, uh, the reason um, that I'm moving this is because this does ask for a report and invest, uh, which is the same as investigation. I also move that we uh, use the car park on 88 O'Connell Street as a trader's car park. 
That doesn't seem to have happened. We now have an illegal car park, which is called an ancillary car park for activation. The site is not activated 90% of the time, and yet there's an open car park there. So I would ask the administration, if this motion does get up, that you actually report back and it doesn't go into some black hole of administrative doom. Uh, because they were good motions. If we had a trader's car park, as I moved successfully on council, we wouldn't possibly need so many of these permits. And uh, also the women's and children, parents and family won't be driving around, because Councillor Martin is exactly right. Uh, we live in North Adelaide. It's a very small suburb with a lot of people wanting parking. Um, we went through many, many um, briefings, uh, meeting workshops last term to do a pyramid. Residents at the top, workers second, um, commuters at the bottom, because we didn't want to be a car park for the city. Um, my, I now look over and most residents that live on the periphery of um, North Adelaide now wake up at seven o'clock, even earlier, to a sea of cars. I live next door to St Dominic's Priory uh, that I moved some time ago to that we give permits at the curtilage of the school. That was knocked back by the team. Um, now when the teachers and the students arrive at 8, 830 there are no car parks. People get out, they with their briefcase, they walk to the free bus on Hill Street and they catch it there. So actually removing the uh, limited parking uh, and making it unlimited um, without permits for the workers um, at the hospitals and the schools has actually disadvantaged them even more than they were disadvantaged in the parking trial. Um, that comes from somebody that doesn't know the area. Um, and ignoring the sage advice of people that live and work in the area. North Adelaide periphery around the parklands now is a sea of cars, all filled by seven o'clock. The nurses can't park there, the workers can't park there, they're all city workers. And of course, it's delightful. I would do that too if I could park under a nice shady tree in North Adelaide, catch the free bus into town to my office, I would do that. But the intent of the original trial, which was flawed, was to make sure that the workers and the residents and the visitors to North Adelaide, patients at the hospital, parents of patients at the women and children, had a fair chance of getting a car park. Now we've thrown out the so-called baby with the bathwater and we're back to being a car park. Thanks, Councillor Kuros. And just a point of clarification from the CEO. Mr. Lord Mayor, Councillor Murray, I understand your comments, but 8 out of Corner Street, just for the record, does have a development approval for the car park. Thank you. Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Chair. Oh, Chair. Um, we are already in a consultation period for the remaining of the restricted parking, which will come to an end in November 2019. Um, so, I mean, I welcome uh, that uh, the petition that we received from Kingston Terrace, that's fantastic. I've also got a petition here that will come into the next council meeting, whereby uh, residents, 71 residents, uh, would like the removal of the restrictions placed in Childers Street, um, for, and that were there, that were put in from July the 1st. They want it reverted back to how it was before July the 1st. And that's 71 signatures, and that's exactly what this consultation is doing. It's providing residents the ability to be able to consult with administration in regards to the aspects of their own street. We actually don't know the numbers of commuters, but this is not the point of the, the motion. The motion is about business permits. So let's let's talk facts here. So according to the statistics we that I've received, we we have external visitors that come into North Adelaide, and they spend approximately um, six um, hundred million six hundred million per annum on dining, coming and dining into North Adelaide. Um, and we also have 200 mil spend on professional services per annum. Um, therefore, the aspect of clogging up our streets with business permits would be a complete disaster for business in the north of the city. So I don't understand the point of this motion. If you speak to businesses, if you actually speak to them, they will tell you the first priority that they want is that they want their customer to be able to, to, to park in the north of the city. That is what they want. So 
the, the primary, the, the, what the businesses want, and what they want support from the council for customers to come into their into their precinct. Um, they don't want the streets to be clogged up with their employees. So let's go back. The administration told us 10,800 people work in North Adelaide. 5,800 car parks are available on street. Where is this going to end? How, are you trying to say, is Councillor Martin trying to say that he doesn't want anybody coming in North Adelaide? He just wants people that's in North Adelaide to stay in North Adelaide and he doesn't want any business coming into North Adelaide. So he wants to stop that because that's basically what you are saying with this motion. So recently we were at, uh, Councillor Martin was there as well with the Main Street uh, SA and uh, they had a conference and uh, clear discussions were, for, were presented by the uh, presenters in regards to having shop and making it easy for shoppers and visitors for the businesses to come into the precinct. That is the key component to this worry that we have in regards to our precinct to the vacancies that we have. So um, I don't know why you're giggling there, Councillor Martin, but yes, you pointed out that we do have three restaurants in the precinct and the three restaurants do not have car parking on there. And we have 30 staff and we have our most, our priority, can I have more time? Uh, by a show of hands. Yes. And the priority, priority here is for our customers to park efficiently. So if you look at the stats here coming further, that people that bring business into the city are, are, are not from, uh, uh, not predominantly, they're coming from outside. They're coming from Prosper, they're coming from Walkerville, they're coming from High, High Marsh and Brompton, they're coming from Burnside, Brompton Park, uh, Windsor Gardens. These are our external visitors that bring business to the businesses. So, you know, the idea of handing out business, business permits is going to squash the fact that what these businesses want, and that is for their economy to grow. Councillor Canole, followed by Councillor Ho. I'll just follow on from Councillor Kouros' comments. And yeah, as, as a person who, who does have businesses, the last thing I need is, is my park, parking my car in front of my business. Uh, it, is, it is about my customers and making it easier for them. So that is the first instance. But we're looking at the trial. I mean, this, the initial trial after all of that, uh, one and a half to two years of consultation, et cetera, really was terribly flawed. This, this, what we've done subsequently now is said we need to do a review. Why? Because the uproar from all of those people we just talked about, whether it be the, from the children's hospital, the, whether it be the, the parents from the, from the children, uh, you know, to the, those people that work in North Adelaide. I mean, there was an amazing uh, uproar from all those people that used it that weren't even really considered at the initial stage. Um, you know, so trying to create now again another batch of permits and things like that is just a waste of time. Let us first deal with the, with the main issue, get to find out what we can do, then readjust things and then certainly model it as you go along so that you are uh, uh, solving a need uh, that is there rather than something that isn't. Uh, because we're just, we're just doing this, I don't understand. We have a process in place, do it come back and then uh, then we work on it and modify it and I think uh, if we do that then we will solve this quickly and I think uh, and when I also think about it I think it's quite um, selfish of the, uh, the councils of the north and one area council that happens over up there um, that we're talking about permits just for North Adelaide. I, there is a city. I, I do have, you know, I feel I feel for all the rest of us who have businesses, etc. in the rest of Adelaide, we talk about North Adelaide as if it's the centre of the universe. And we, who deserve no less than the rest of the city, um, and our, we have to do what we do, fend for ourselves. Um, you know, and our staff have to do uh, park wherever they can. All of a sudden, that's all okay. But yet we have something special there, and North Adelaide is an equal partner, an equal resident, an equal you know part of the city. It is not that special as against all the rest of us. We all need to be treated evenly and fairly. And this this continuously uh, one-sided uh, conversation. Move it to your area. Move it to your area. Do your job. I, I, my job is an open. Oh. Come on. Over to you, yes, Councillor Canal. Please um, continue. Now, so so we look at that. We just want to make this city more accessible, and all the rest of it. But those are the way that we do that by solving the issues, not by continuously finding band aids and putting it on something. It, it, we do need to have a, solve a bigger problem because this city is much bigger than just North Adelaide, and our issues that we have for our wider community is much larger. And that's what we want to solve. And um, this car parking is only just an example of the the. Uh, 
I don't know what it is. No Councillor Ho. Thank you, Chair. Well, I'll make it quite brief. Simply ask Councillor Martin whether or not he will accept a very small variation in the second paragraph by deleting North. No. Councillor Martin? No. No. Uh, that's it. That's all I'd like to know. Okay. Does anyone else wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Thank you, Chair. We've obviously heard both sides of the argument, and I'm still trying to uh, understand the intention of, uh, of this motion. And I think the best way that I can describe it is, is this. You organise a birthday party, you have one room, you bring in a chair, just one chair, you take that chair, your guests start arriving, there is no chair for them to sit down. So what are they going to do? They're going to leave that party and probably go to one of Councillor Kouros' restaurants. That's essentially what this, uh, this motion is trying to do. If we're not, if we're not, uh, if we're not providing for, for our uh, customers, if we're not um, uh, doing what we can for our businesses, I don't know what, uh, what we're all doing here, and I don't really understand what this motion is trying to work, trying to do with it. So uh, I urge members not to support this. Does anyone else else wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Martin, would you like to sum up? Yes, uh, thank you. What do I call you, acting presiding officer? Mm, sure, that sounds good. Okay. Look, um, may I just say that Councillor Kouros is discombobulated. She is the most discombobulated person I know. Yes, you're discombobulated. There's no doubt about that. Um, and it is because... I'm sorry, I, I thought there was going to be an interjection. There wasn't. And it is because every one of you misunderstands what this is about. You misunderstand that what is happening in North Adelaide at this time is that because of the changes, businesses are being denied parking spaces in areas that were untimed or are 10 hour parking. And so they, the businesses of North Adelaide, are parking in two hour, one hour and half hour areas which are reserved for the customers of the businesses in Adelaide. So you have professional offices where there might be 10 employees and they're flooding in, parking in two hour zones because all of the 10 hour and untimed ones are filled with city commuters. And as a consequence, these workers in North Adelaide in the two hour zones are preventing people going and patronizing Councillor Kouros' restaurants. That is the number of the issue. The restaurants of Councillor Kouros are being prevented from accessing customers because employers and their staff are parking in the spots reserved for the customers. That's all there is in this. So this is asking the administration to come back with a set of proposals that might be developed to allow those employers, those people who are ratepayers in North Adelaide, to park in areas that are currently untimed or 10 hour being used by city commuters freeing up the half hour, two hour and one hour spaces so that people can go and enjoy a meal at Councillor Kouros' restaurant. That's it. That, that is the proposal. Nothing more than that. And it's asking the administration to come back with a report and tell us how that will work. It's pretty straightforward. And the reason it says North Adelaide is because it cannot be done in anywhere uh, any other place, as far as we know, because there have been no local area traffic management plan studies. Now, I appreciate uh, uh, Councillor Canals in the North Adelaide residents uh, living in Walkerville, which is a lovely suburb. I do understand North Adelaide is the kind of place that most people aspire to live in, and including Councillor Kouros, who lives at Prospect, I'm sure. But the matter is thoroughly investigated thoroughly reported on. We know more about parking in North Adelaide. Last term we acquired so much knowledge that this proposal is so straightforward. It's easy. And to vote against it is to disadvantage our businesses in North Adelaide. They won't be happy. All those in favour of the motion by a show of hands. And against? Division. That has failed. A division has been called. Those members voting in favour of the motion as varied, please rise.
Sorry. Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran, and Councillor Sims. And that is lost. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Uh, we are at item number 15.3, Councillor Sims, our Treasury Policy Provision. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. I move the motion as printed and seek a seconder. Councillor Moran. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, I won't read out the, the motion because it's there on the, um, the screen, but this is a straightforward proposition. It's an amendment to Council's Treasury policy to insert the words into our policy that were recommended by our administration almost 12 months ago. At that time, administration recommended that we preference investment securities and financial institutions which do not invest in the fossil fuel industry. Now, whatever councillors may think of my politics or my philosophy, Lord Mayor, I submit to you tonight that this is a sensible motion that is in line with our own administration's recommendations. I understand this was proposed at our first meeting. In fact, it was the first meeting after the um, election. And um, I can understand that some members maybe felt, didn't feel comfortable to support um, the recommendation at that time and may have required additional information. And um, so I thought tonight was a good opportunity for us to revisit this. Um, and uh, I've sent around some information uh, relating to um, the implications of this. Um, and um, we've received several briefings in the past uh, around the implications of climate change and, and how that's managed. Lord Mayor, the City of Adelaide is a big organisation. We have an operating budget of around $200 million. So where we put our money has a big impact. Money talks and we can use this to send a message. We've heard evidence from our audit committee warning, a warning of the risks associated with climate change, and I understand that they have supported making this policy revision. And they're a fairly conservative bunch, usually Lord Mayor, but they have advocated for us to make this change. Many councils across the country have done this, including the cities of Melbourne, the cities of Hobart, Fremantle and Newcastle, but we would be the first council in South Australia to do so. Just a few months ago, we declared a climate emergency. This is a chance for us to put our money where our mouth is by distancing ourselves from the fossil fuel industry. This has been a long campaign, Lord Mayor. I first proposed a similar uh, motion to this relating to divestment back in 2015, after I was first elected to Adelaide City Council. And um, I understand Councillor Mark took that up again um, in 2017, and it was considered again last year. So I'm hoping that this fourth attempt will be successful. And I do want to recognise the work of um, the many campaigners, in particular from Fossil Fuel SA. Uh, there were some in the gallery before. I think they haven't quite made it through the endurance that can sometimes be a council meeting. Um, but there have been lots of people campaigning on this over a long period of time. And uh, I think it would be a great outcome for our city to achieve this tonight. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I apologise, members, I've lost my microphone. Well, I haven't stopped working. Um, <laughs> Councillor, <laughs> Councillor Moran, would you like to speak to the I'd motion? Like to my right hand. Thank you, members. Anybody else like to speak to it? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Summed up, Lord Mayor. Uh, members, those in favour? Those against? That is lost. Division. Shame. Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise. Councillor Martin, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims. Thank you, members. Um, Councillor uh, Kira, uh, the 15.4 has been withdrawn from this week. And um, we'll come back into Council at another time. That takes us to item 16. Are there any motions without notice? If not, we will go to item 17 on the agenda. Um, so item 17 is a decision of published councillors. There are two items presented for consideration for um, in confidence. Each item requires a separate motion and decision in order 
for the institutional public to remain in consideration in confidence. If I could have a move, please, for 18.1.1. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Seconded by Councillor Knoll. Uh, members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. And a mover and a second of 18.1.2. Thank you, Councillor Moran. And a seconder, Councillor Kouros. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. So thank you to members of staff for attending the meeting. Thank you, Ed. Uh, thank you, members. I declare the meeting closed.